Let's uh, broaden out the conversation if we could. Bring in Hightower, Stephanie Link, and Requisite Capital Management's Bryn Talkington, both, of course, CNBC contributors. <clears throat> Excuse me, Steph, you first. As I said to Mr. Greenhouse here, to my left, NASDAQ is up better than 1% three days in a row. The significance of that, if any, to where you think this is going? Well, uh, Scott, you know, I'm thinking that we're in a trading range, and we have been in a trading range for a while. So I've been saying choppy, volatility is on the rise, and that sort of thing. Until the Fed signal that they're done tightening, or until we get really, really bad data, then we're probably we're probably really going to have these headwinds, right? And they've barely even started to tighten, right? They're not even at neutral yet. So you have a Fed that is behind the curve and playing catch up into a slowing economy. You mentioned the Philly Fed. Uh, that was really pretty dismal. Initial claims are starting to rise as well. Um, and, and so I think the weaker economic news, along with inflation, along with a strong dollar, and let me tell you, I've listened to a dozen call, calls so far for earnings, and it has been dollar and it has been inflation. Even if companies have pricing power, they're having problems on the cost side of things. So I think we're just kind of chop around for a while. So the AAII sentiment got so incredibly negative, so extreme. And historically, when it gets that extreme, yeah, you do have a rally, and a pretty fierce one, and it could last a while. Um, and I actually think that this growth rally over value and it's been beating by 500 basis points since June. I think that's sort of interesting. Um, but I don't think you want to get over your skis on growth or over your skis on value. You have to be more balanced because we do have the Fed. We do have inflation. Historically, that's not good for long duration assets. And we have a ways to go in terms of what the Fed is going to be doing. This is all going to come down. I'm glad you ended on what the Fed is going to do, Brent. It's all going to come down to what the Fed's comfortable with, right? How much is the, the Fed content with slowing the economy and to what degree? Is a mild recession acceptable to the Fed? Because if we don't have a recession, we're going to get right to the doorstep, it feels like, right? The, um, as we said, Philly Fed, ugly. LEI, ugly. Housing has been ugly. Job cuts, we're starting to hear about more of those. And those numbers are only likely to pick up. So it really depends on how far the Fed wants to press the case on inflation and put the economy into whatever tough state that it's going to go into as a result. Right. I think the key with the Fed next week, I think 75 is like in the cards that we all feel that's going to happen. It's going to be their words. It's going to be what they say. Are they going to use more words like measured? Are they going to are they going to continue to be really hawkish? Because I think those words are incredibly important. You know, Jay, they've said that the recession is not their base case. I think, though, investors are going to remain very frustrated all year long. I mean, you know, Stephanie said it so well. You don't want to get over your skis on really any one sector. And as long as the Fed is tightening, both they're reducing their balance sheet and raising rates, I think it's going to be really hard for our investors or the markets to really get multiple expansion. Because, Scott, if you think about this, oil spikes have preceded recessions. Inverted yield curves have preceded recessions. Aggressive Fed have preceded recessions. We have all three this year. And so really what I'm anchoring on is trying to figure out what's actually priced in. But what I am really interested in is, and I've been talking about this, is a lot of these tech stocks continue to make higher lows and have, you know, are really creeping up. And to me, that's a really good sign of a bottoming process. And I think that Netflix you know, came out and you actually traded up after their earnings is another good sign of some of these stocks that are down 60 and 70 are actually bottoming out. Yeah, we uh, really, uh, Snap is imminent. Uh, I just want to remind everybody of that. We'll have that the moment that it comes out. You wanted to yeah, I, j I mean, say something? Brin's exactly right. What you want to see your stocks rallying on bad news on the idea that, that I told you I'm going to lose 2 million subscribers. Uh, I, I lose a lot, but it's not quite as yeah, bad. Yeah, I lose as a million. I don't lose 2 million. Yeah, so, it's, hey, it's, let's throw a party. Not, let's throw a party. And, and that's good. But something Bryn said is also uh, bears commenting on the Fed uh, that a, a mild recession is not their base case. I mean, that in 275 is going to get me on the subway. Uh, the Federal Reserve has no credibility whatsoever, as does anybody. This is a $20 trillion economy. And the idea that, that a bunch of people sitting around a table have any idea with any specificity uh, the degree of recession they're going to cause is just not borne out by the data. Uh, you know, you know, Steph, I, I just want to get to before we get to uh, a snap, which I expect any second now, it's not like you're doing nothing in the market. I've documented both on this show and halftime of moves you, you've been making. You just bought a new one, too, and that's Broadcom. Yeah, it's my first semiconductor name in a long time, Scott. Tell uh, me look, why. I think down 20. 
Well, I think down 23 percent, trades at 13 times uh, earnings, it yields 3.2 percent. But most importantly, the company did had a, co a conference and, and a meeting uh, recently, and they talked about hey, supply demand.